Overnight, thousands of protesters hit the streets in Portland, Oregon for the 54th straight night. Some peacefully, others clashing with police as they try to break into that federal courthouse again. In Chicago, the protesters, they are rallying against the Trump administration. Plans to send 175 federal officers to that city, according to some reports. This comes after police release new video of rioters ambushing police near a statue of Christopher Columbus. And you can see demonstrators dressed in black. They're using umbrellas to shield themselves. They are throwing uh, frozen water bottles at the police, Griff. Yeah, that's right. One of them is seen throwing frozen water bottles on the ground for protesters to throw at the officers. What's important, Ainsley, is that 49 cops were hurt, 18 taken to the hospital, police arresting 12 people in connection to that attack. We want to bring in now Kaylee McEnany from the North Lawn White House Press Secretary. Kaylee, good morning. As the good president talks you. about bringing in uh, more federal uh, assistance into the lawlessness in American cities. Our own John Roberts reporting that right now the president hasn't yet made uh, a decision to do that, but it could change. What's the latest? Yeah, I'll leave that to the president to decide what that will look like. But what he's laid out so far are two models. And uh, in the first one, what you saw going on in Kansas City with Operation Legend, named after Legend Talaferro, a four-year-old boy who was killed in his sleep tragically. What you've seen there is you've had a responsible governor saying, yes, I need federal assistance. I welcome federal assistance. I want to protect the people um, in my state. And we've worked cooperatively, DOJ has. And then in the case of Portland, this has been DHS. We've seen opposition from the Democrat mayor, from the Democrat governor, uh, but DHS does have the authority under 40 U.S.C. 1315 to do this and protect federal property, and that's what they've done against a lot of lawlessness and anarchy. You know, Kaylee, we had uh, the president of, the, uh, we had somebody from Chicago on, a uh, retired uh, police officer, and uh, yesterday talking about the fact that the Fraternal Order of Police president in Chicago begged the president to send you know, essentially federal officers to Chicago because uh, nothing was being done by the mayor there, said it was chaotic and, and everything else. I know the way the federal government works. I know you've got plans to do all sorts of things in, in various cities. But the question is, what will have to happen before those plans are activated? You know, I'll leave it to the president as to when that plan is activated and what that looks like. Uh, but he's very upset with what he's seen. What he's seen. He's wrote a letter to the mayor about this. You have children who have been shot, people who have died, roughly a dozen people every single weekend, uh, more people dying in the city than in Iraq and Afghanistan. I mean, this is incredible. This is on a street in America run by a derelict Democrat mayor who is doing nothing to stop this. So the president's very upset with this. I spoke. Tim about this this morning, but I'll leave it to him as to when uh, that decision is made and what it looks like. Okay, uh, Kaylee, let's talk about the McClowskis. Mr. and Mrs. McClowski came out of their house in, in St. Louis uh, a while ago when protesters trespassed onto their property and they came out with uh, one with a rifle and one with um, a gun. And um, they, or a pistol, it looks like. So, handgun, um, handgun right. So, anyway, they, uh, there's a, a local prosecutor there, and she has filed felony charges against them for unlawful use of a weapon. Her name is Kim Gardner, and she says this. She says it is illegal to wave weapons in a threatening manner at those participating in a nonviolent protest. And while we are fortunate this situation did not escalate into deadly force, this type of conduct is unacceptable in St. Louis. And the governor has said he will no doubt pardon this couple if they if if uh, this becomes a problem for them. He was on last night with Tucker. Listen to this. Well, it's a totally upside down world, Tucker. The people that broke into my neighborhood, they're all trespassing. None of those people are arrested. None of those people are charged. The prosecutor, the, the circuit attorney, has apparently decided that her job as a prosecutor isn't to keep us safe from criminals but to keep the criminals safe from us. It's, it's a bizarre, upside-down world. I've been a little irritated by this process until today. Now I'm just flat-out pissed off. I mean, this, is, this has gotten to be outrageous. Kayla, your reaction? 
Yeah, he's exactly right. This is an egregious abuse of power, is how the president described it uh, by the prosecutor to make this decision. Let's be clear about what happened. You had the McCloskeys out about to have dinner on their front porch when 300 to 500 rioters uh, stormed through their gate, trespassed. And according to his wife, Patricia, she said that some of these protesters were shouting, you know, when you're dead, I'm going to come into your house and these are the rooms I'm going to take over. Uh, they were threatened and they used their weapons in a law manner and what is so wrong here is this prosecutor to go after them instead of the dozens of violent uh, rioters who have been brought to her attention and referred to her attention and she hasn't prosecuted them but boy will she go after law-abiding citizens this is politically motivated nonsense Kaylee let me take you to the president's tweet getting some attention and that is one of him the picture wearing a mask. Here's what the president said. You see that shot there? He's got the mask on. And he says, we are united in our effort to defeat the invisible China virus. And many people say that it is patriotic to wear a face mask when you can't socially distance. There's nobody more patriotic than me, your favorite president. A significant image you see there. Um, will we see President Trump wearing a mask more frequently? I'll leave that to the president. The president's always been very clear where he stood on masks. He said, you know, if I couldn't socially distance, I'd wear one. In his case, he's the most tested person in America, so he's uh, very safe when he goes out and about. I'll leave that to him, but he liked that picture. We all thought it was a great picture, and he put it out, and he encourages Americans who can't socially distance to wear masks. Uh, he has said that, but, you know, we know the science, Kaylee, is that the masks slow the spread. And really, you know, some people say they restrict my personal rights, but really they represent freedom because if you wear a mask, people are going to be able to keep their businesses open. Uh, they don't have to have more lockdowns. People will be able to go back to school and, and things like that. So it's, it's obviously a, a positive. That's just science. But for some people, it has become a political thing. Wearing a mask has become political. So my question simply to you is, is wearing a mask a political statement? Well, President Trump's been very clear that um, wearing masks has nothing to do with politics. He would wear, wear them in certain scenarios, as he did at Walter Reed, uh, when he couldn't socially distance and was in a hospital. Uh, so it's never been a political issue for him, shouldn't be a political issue. Uh, and he stands today where he stood a week ago and a week before that. Okay, so for your message to people who will not wear a mask because they feel it's infringing on their rights, they don't want the government to tell them what to do, what do you say to those people? Well, I would say the CDC has been clear that it's recommended but not required. Uh, there's not a federal mandate. But if you can't socially distance, follow the president's lead, uh, put on a mask. And I think that's the best way forward. And the president has been saying that for weeks. Okay, good. Uh, president is saying that the briefings are going to come back, the coronavirus briefings. What do you know about that? What's the latest? So I talked to him about that this morning. These are going to be um, short briefings of the president mainly delivering information to the American people that's needed on therapeutics and vaccines. There will be other information tied into these briefings. We have a lot of plans over the next three months. So you're going to be hearing about other topics as well. Uh, the president may at times bring someone with him, maybe not. That'll be his decision. But these will be very newsy briefings um, with a lot of information the American, will it be at American the, people will Will it be hear. at the same time every day? And will he take questions? Yeah, it'll usually be in the 5 or 6 p.m. hour. Um, it may be daily. Um, it will be most days, maybe not all days. Um, but he does say, he said to me this morning, he does generally plan on taking questions questions at these and delivering a lot of good news on therapeutics and vaccines and the way forward through this virus and uh, showing our historic response also and with ventilators and testing uh, and the way this president has cut down bar barriers and got us to the point where we already have a vaccine in phase three clinical trial because of this president. Kaylee, it's a big day in Washington when it comes to the next phase four coronavirus package. Of course, you had uh, the McConnell uh, at the White House yesterday and McCarthy. But then today, Democrats will meet with White House officials, Secretary Mnuchin, Chief of Staff Meadows. So I want to ask you uh, where that stands now and also reports that the White House and Republican Senate leaders are not necessarily on the same page yet. Where are we? 
You know, we're in a place where I think we're we're in a place of unity. You know, I was in the Oval with the president yesterday and Leader McCarthy um, and also uh, Mr. McConnell um, as well, Majority Leader McConnell, and all of them were in agreement on, on a lot of key points, and they shared that with the American public yesterday. You know, the president wants to see that payroll tax cut in there. Uh, there's also going to be at least $70 billion in there for mm -hmm. schools to safely reopen, tax incentives for businesses to safely reopen as well. Um, and as Secretary Mnuchin said yesterday, um, he'd also like to see this wrapped up within the month uh, before unemployment benefits um, run out and, and make sure that those who are unemployed are taken care of while incentivizing people to go back to work. Sure. And in addition to people going back to work, uh, I know the president wants uh, kids to go back to school. However, it's, we've already heard, Kaylee, there are a number of districts and states that are talking about, eh, not so sure that's going to happen. Will there, in the new coronavirus uh, rescue package, be something that addresses American schools? Because there are a number of schools, for instance, here in New York City, I think 17 Catholic schools are going to have to close because there are, you know, not enough parents are signing up for next year because of the uncertainty. Also, they're not making any money. But if, if a school uh, board decides not to open up for whatever reason, I know it has been talked about that their parents should have the school choice to take federal money and use that at a school that is open that can teach their kids in person. Yes, that is exactly the president's goal. He wants the funding to be tied to the student. Um, how that works mechanically, we'll see. But that is uh, undoubtedly the priority, is for the student to receive the money, for the parent to have the choice and make sure if they have a neighboring district with a school open, they can send their, their child there. Because it is paramount for a number of reasons, for the whole health of the child, for children who depend on school lunches and social services that schools provide, for parents. We know that there are many single moms that depend on schools for child care and we know educational disparities start to happen for low-income students in particular when schools aren't open this is paramount we've got to reopen our schools the president's been unmistakable about it there will be more than 70 billion dollars uh, in phase four for that very purpose Kaylee thanks for joining us today thank you Ainsley you're welcome